The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. Lady Ada uses her power of engineering every single week to find the things you need to find on digikey.com. What is this week's Great Search, Lady Ada? Okay, so this week's Great Search is related to the board I just popped up on the screen. Uh, this is a board that I designed a few weeks ago. It's the uh, PCA um, or TCA 9584A. This is a, a STEM QT version, the plug and play version of a very popular eight channel multiplexer board that we have. So you have I squared C chips, as you know, they have addresses. The addresses can't conflict. If they do conflict, then either change the address or you can use a multiplexer. And the multiplexer, it's like you have to like tell it you know, it's over I squared C, and so you send like one special command to the address, you tell it which to connect to, and then it'll reroute the signals and it you know does it transparently. It does work pretty well. I think there's a couple of weirdo chips that don't like multiplexers, but for the most part, um, they're a great way of just like, hey, I need like that light sensor, the LTR 30, you know, 329. You're like, well, this is a really cheap light sensor, um, but I need to have eight of them in a grid you would use something like this. So um, I was designing this, but as I was doing this, I thought it would be um, a good idea to not just have an eight channel version, but a four channel version. And so, uh, cause some people are like, well, I don't need something that big. I want a little smaller board, but again, I don't need, um, or maybe I want like all the pads broken out, but I don't need um, eight channels, four is plenty. And I agree, eight is a lot. Like most people don't need eight channels. So let's go to the computer and see how I did this, because it was a little bit weird to find, um, and I'll show you why. So this is the uh, TCA9548, and so what I usually do, and you know, people know that when I'm looking for, oh, this is, by the way, that light sensor, the LTR329, is, you know, I'll type it in, and then I'm like, Cool, let's find the, the chip, it's, well, let's find the chip itself, and there's eval boards, and there's eval boards, but then I want this, multiplexer decoder and I'm like yeah like this chip this is the chip I'm buying instead of stock I want like the four one by four one so I want like an active bus switch and I want it to be surface mount and then I'll just select when it comes up with the search thing I'll select one two four by one so you know I did that and when I looked like there were a couple options but um I kind of had this feeling of like maybe there was something else. Also, they were a little confusing. Like some of these, they weren't like I squared. Well, some of them were I squared C. This one was. Um, but I think like this first one maybe wasn't. I'm trying to remember what it was. Some of them were like they weren't quite I squared C compatible. Um, yeah, like this was like a different kind of switch. And I was like, well, I don't know if this is... <laughs> Yeah, this is a, a bus switch, and that's cool, but I wanted, like, an I squared C multiplexer switch in particular. And, um, no, oh, sorry, go back. So I was, like, a little bit confused because I was like, really, this is all there is? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And then I realized that there's actually, this chip is such a weirdo chip. It actually get categorized in a couple different locations. And so I was like, oh, you know, I should show people that, yes, you can always search by using the... DigiKey find similar, but there's also a lot of reason to go to the place where you, the chip fab, the, the maker of the chip, and use their search because oftentimes they'll find, um, they'll have all the parts and you can they have a slightly better search for their products. The only thing is, of course, you won't find like competing products. So you have to kind of do this for every company that might make something similar. And then it's like, well, how do you know what companies might make something similar? And the answer is like, you don't really, maybe you just like do the best you can. Like think of, you know, is this something that TI would make? Is this something that analog devices would make? Is this something that Maxim or like, you know, Renaissance would make? So in this case, the PCA, so the TCA 9548, uh, and you can see here that this is the breakout board we make. It's actually, um, this one's made by TI. So you actually go to TI's site and then, you know, they have, the they're, Look, DigiKey has like a, you know, five bazillion literally uh, different um, chips and companies, and it's hard to sometimes categorize them exactly, whereas like TI has a lot of incentive to categorize all their products very well because this is their job. Like their job is to sell their products, have to make it easy. So for them, they have a whole category called I squared C multiplexers and switches. 
And then what's nice is that you can um, view all products. I will say, because my monitor isn't that big, that this works best in like 1080p and this is 720. So you'll see a lot, you know, it's a little easier to navigate these massive tables. Um, okay, so that said, you can see here that they have a lot of options. And of course, they'll have the automotive and the catalog type. They'll give you the approximate price, you know, which is very optimistic, but let's see what we can do. So number of channels, and you can see they have a couple options here for, let's see, do they have number of channels? I think, oh, it's not added to the search, so we have to click on it. And now it's added. So number of channels, so basically how many I squared C to, you know, one to X, and we use the standard, the TCA 9548A, which has um, eight channels, but we want something with four. So we can go down to here and say we want it to be no less than four, no greater than four. And this will give us uh, six options. Um, so then the other thing is you can look at the package group. Um, you know, I do like QFNs the most. QFN, I mean, SOICs I find to be a little bit too big, but if you're a beginner, of course, they're hand solderable. TSOPs I find annoying. Um, they're hard to rework and they're hard to pick in place. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of TSOPs. Um, I like QFNs the most. Uh, I find them fairly easy to rework. Uh, you can, you know, there's no pins to bend and they're also very small, but you know everyone has their own favorites. So you can search by package group. There's another thing you can search by supply voltage. And one thing I noticed as I looked at this is actually there's two, there's six, uh, there's six chips, but there's actually three chips, two variants of each. So there's the TCA9544 and the PCA9544. And the difference is, um, one, the number of packages, uh, sorry, the number of, um, yeah, packages available. So the, the I don't want to click this because it'll pop open. The TCA9544 has only TSOP, whereas the PCA9544 has TSOP, VSOP, QFN. And that's because the voltage is a little bit high as supply voltage. So... You know, historically we used um, PCA, sorry, we used TCA, which goes down to 1.8 volt logic. But one thing you have to decide is, especially with a chip shortage, is like maybe you're okay with something that has slightly less voltage restriction. So I was like, you know what? I only need it to be um, 2.3 volts minimum. I don't really need the 1. Point, you know, 1.65. I'd rather have a smaller package. Um, and then there's three options. And so then you can look at the difference. One is addresses, which is how many like address pins you can set. Um, and I do like having um, you know some address pins. And then there's the question of uh, whether you have reset or interrupt or reset and interrupt. And you kind of trade off. If you want reset and interrupt, you, you lose the addresses. I liked having the addresses, so then um, the question is which, which one I wanted, the, the reset or the interrupt pin. The interrupt pin was interesting. Um, you don't go into the details, but you can look at the data sheet. Basically, for each of the four channels, you can have an interrupt line, and then we'll or them for you or, you know, whatever, to, to get you um, one interrupt output, which I was sort of like, I was not as interested in because, again, this going to be with, like, stomach QT ports. So... I kind of ended up deciding, okay, I want the reset pin with the address. This is so the 9546A. Uh, remember, there's the TCA and the PCA version, depending on, you know, whether you wanted the 2.3 or 1.65 voltage. And then I just went back here and I typed in the, the, that half, half Z. And um, there's some in decoders here, but what's interesting, it's kind of interesting, there's kind of like a a mix and match like they appeared here um but they also appeared under interface specialized and uh this is where the actual stock was so there's actually a couple pieces in stock another thing is nxp and, and ti both make the same almost exact part number i don't know who made it first so you know if it's nxp and ti you know made a version or the other way around i, I don't know um but they seem to use the same uh uh, part numbers, and they do have in stock the, well, let's go to the active ones just to make sure that we're only looking at what's available. They have uh, the TSOP version, the SOIC version, and of course my favorite is the um, QFN. It looks like TI has a version in QFN, and they're not in stock right now, but NXP also does. There's also a uh, VQFN. I'm not 
not as much in love with a VQFM, but I do like this one. So I'm into this, um, this part. So this is the part I'm going to get samples of. Again, it's nice and small, but easy to rework. I, I love, you know, if it's, as long as it's 0.5 millimeter pitch, I'm really into um, QFN. And then as a side note, just because uh, I'll we'll wrap this up, but this category interface specialized is super freaky weird and cool. Um, like there's all the weird stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else. And um, I just started like clicking around in some of these and they're all like really kind of cool. There's just like weird like um, display port to VGA converters from analog devices and like multiplexer things and like, like what is this TDP something something? This is like a, a eight gigahertz linear redriver for DisplayPort. Like it's just the, the weirdest stuff. So I do recommend checking out um, this zone. I sorted by what was available, and I just I just found some really um, funky, weird chips. Uh, a lot of them are in the marketplace. Like some stuff got released to the marketplace. There's some, you know, Bunny had a post about how he thinks there's some cancellation of of components, but. Um, yeah, do check this out. It's just it's just weird. It's just weird chips, and I I kind of love weird chips. Anyways, uh, where was I? Right, the PCA ninety five forty six. This is my pick for this week's the Great Search. That's a great search.